Welcome to Peak Worship. We're so excited that you tuned in today. Pastor Dan has a powerful word for you, and we are believing and praying that it's going to change your life. Whenever Moses came off the mount, you remember the Shekinah glory, the Ruach HaKadosh that, that was just upon him. Amen? You remember they had to put the veil upon him. They had to put this, oh, because he was just so bright that they, oh, you know what? Let me just, let me, I just have to hide some of this kind of glory because God is so good. Amen? Amen. It's just something about God that I, it just excites me. It's just something about God and his image that's incredible, that, that he's, he's the light wherever I go. Wherever I go, he's the light. That darkness has to flee. Have you ever taken a candle into a room and, and as you watch the light go across the walls, darkness is, is uh, leaving. Darkness is running. You know, it, it's just amazing how when I walk into my bedroom with a candle or I walk into my, my office with a candle or uh, the living room, because I, I love to shut the lights off and, and I love to light a candle. And I love to stand before God and, and I, I just I, I bow down and to God. I, some, there's a lot of times that within my office, I'll wear my prayer shawl and, and I just because I want. Oh, I want to picture him. I want to picture him in my mind, in my heart of how great he is. And in every area of my life, when I invite him in, he's this Shekinah glory, this image of this huge light that comes in and it lights this room where there's no darkness at all. That means there's no demonic spirits. That means there's no, no, everything has to flee. Whatever, worry has to go. Doubt has to go. Torment has to go. Sickness has to, everything has to go because his Shekinah glory. Can you just imagine being hid in that rock in his backside? You just get a glimpse of his backside. Do you, do you get a picture of how big God is? This God that was able to, to raise the fish and, and break the loaves and, and break the fish and, and, and multiply it and feed 4,000. And then another time feed 5,000. Do you see how, how great of a provider this God is? Are you getting a, a picture, an image of how great God is in your life? Can you see that this word illuminates everywhere I go? It illuminates. It, it, it doesn't create darkness. It illuminates where my path, my feet, it's a light upon my feet and a light upon my path. This word of God, when I look at everything through the word of God, I see a manifestation. I see a glory. I see a creator. I Oh, do you see this image of this God, how big he is? When I see my Goliath, I see a God standing behind him that's even bigger. Amen. Oh, that Goliath is already destroyed. This is what I see. I see a beautiful creation. I see something spectacular. I, I see this God that is flawless. Amen. Oh, he's beautiful, church. Do, can you see him? Just close your eyes for a minute. Just close your eyes for a minute. And just picture this, this, this Jesus. This is what I do so many times is I'll picture Jesus. And, and I'm walking behind Jesus. And I see the sandals on his feet. And he's just walking. I see the, the dirt, the clouds of dirt when he puts his feet down. How they, the clouds of the sand just puff up. I see this, this God, my, my, my Jesus, walk up to a, this blind man. And just puts his hands upon him and, and, and says, you're healed. Do you, can you see this Jesus? Can you see him walking along the crowd and this one lady reach out and just touch the hem of his garment and she's healed the Shekinah glory? Can you see this Jesus in your mind, in your heart? Because you're not, oh, right now, you're not gonna see him in the flesh. You're gonna see him in your heart. You're gonna see the word in your heart. You're gonna see the word in your mind. I, I need you to get a glimpse of his image that as he walks by, just the glory that individuals now are receiving their sight, that the, the oh, Oh, the child that was on the stretcher. They said that he was dead. They said she was dead. But oh, oh, God said they're just sleeping. And, and they, oh, just, they're just sleeping. And he calls them by their name and they rise up. Do you see this Jesus that is perfect, that has no flaws? The man that, that un, just unconditional love that walks around. There's people that spitting and mocking him. And he's saying, you know what, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Father God, just forgive him. Can you picture this Jesus? Yes. Can you picture how pure he is? How awesome he is. Can you picture him? Yes. Now I want you to picture him walking right up to you face to face. 
looking into Jesus' eyes and him saying, you are my child. The image you see is the image you're made of. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. See, we just, I just portrayed a picture of how great this Jesus is, amen? How beautiful he is, that he, he's made, that he's unique, amen? There's no other God like G Jesus, amen? There's no other individual that has dominion over all things. There's no other individual that's created anything out of nothing, amen? There's no other Jehovah Rapha. There's no other Jehovah Shalom. There's no other I am. There's no other, other Emmanuel, Adonai, Elohim. There's, there's no other but Jesus Almighty. There's nothing that was in the beginning all or at the end, but Jesus. Jesus Almighty. There's only one Alpha and Omega. There's only one Lord of Lord and King of Kings. There's only one. And we have to understand that we are made, it says right here, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And see, so many times that one little phrase we check it off right there in the Bible and we do not live by it. Because that's the biggest thing within our lives, is it not? We do not see who we are in the image of. We do not see who we're in the likeness of. Amen? Amen. Oh, we're, we're going somewhere. Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. This is the book of the genealogy, gene, genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. And Adam, and, and Adam lived um, 130 30 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. We realize what the image of God is. We realize who God is. We want to believe everything in the Bible. We want to realize that he is God above all. Amen. That he's Jehovah. That he's Emmanuel. That he is the creator. He's the healer. He can do all things. We want to believe this. But then whenever it comes to looking in the mirror and seeing ourselves, then we want to crucify ourselves because we don't see ourselves in the likeness of God. Amen. We see ourselves as lacking instead of providing. Amen? That we have a provider. That, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lack. I, I'm not flawed because there's no way that I can be flawed because God's not flawed. And we need to start looking into the mirror in the eyes of Jesus so everything is a reflection of him. Amen. Because the problem is, is too many times as Christians, this whole image thing is, is driving us nuts, is it not? Isn't that why magazines, GQ magazines, selling out like crazy? Isn't that why all the swimsuit um, magazines selling out? Isn't that why, you know, uh, the, 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 um, all the cosmetics and, and the MAC and the perfumes and everything? I mean, all that's, it, all that's great, isn't it? You know, they say the perfume in a bottle is, is just scents. I mean, it's just like minute. It's less than probably a dollar, maybe like 15 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents. But it's the bottle that costs a lot because they put a lot of the engineering in, the designing, the creating of the bottle because they have to catch your eye because too many times we're living by sight. It's about the image, is it not? We're looking at, oh man, he has a nice six pack. Uh, right? Am I the only one? Oh, boy, look at how she looks, man. Oh, I tell you what, she's like slim. She's like six foot. Oh, my goodness. We start looking at other images, do we not? Then we allow other images to come within our heart 
then we try to set our success on another image instead of the image that God's created. See, because whenever I start comparing, when I start comparing, I'm allowing Satan to come in. Because as soon as I decide to compare, then I'm saying what God's created is not glorious. Oh, we're going somewhere, church. We're going somewhere. Uh, see, see, right there in verse 126, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. See, image within the Hebrew is form. It means the visual appearance of something or someone. The visual appearance of something or someone. See, God is I am. He's all things. He's everything. And see, each and every one of us, take a look at your neighbor. Just look at your neighbor. Look him up and down like you got an attitude, but you, you have love. Just look at them. Yeah, or if the sister cuts you off in the 75% the line because she just picked up the last thing. Or at Christmas time, you're running in there to get those bargains and, and all someone cuts you off and takes the last item. Well, I'll tell you what right now. You, you're sizing them up, aren't you? You're taking a look at, you know, well, let me see if I can take this one down. Because you can't go by the image. You have to go by what's inside. See, image, form, the visual appearance of something or someone. If you even go even further within the Hebrew, it means brilliance, phenomena. I mean, because this is who God is. I mean, he, he, he's, just, he's, he, he's just incredible. He, he, he's a master he, creator. He's a master engineer. He, he's just this Shekinah glory, this light, this brilliance that we can't even understand. And then it goes likeness. It, it, it says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. It, it wasn't our likeness. It was God's likeness. Amen. Do you understand? Likeness is similarity in appearance, character, or nature between persons or things. That means we have God's character. We're made by his, in his character and his attributes. That means we have the ability to have unconditional love. That means we have the ability to love each other. That means we have the ability to walk out everything in love. That means, you know what, his character? That means we have a choice that we don't have to lie because God's the one that's not going to lie. Amen? Amen? We have his attributes. Because we have his likeness. We have authority that he's been given us since day one. But we refuse to access it because we refuse to believe that we're in the image of him. And until we realize that we're in the image of him, we'll never understand what power brings that in. Because whenever I understand that I, I, I'm in the power of this individual, then that's who the power that I have. If I'm in the image of this individual, I should say, then that's the power that I'm gleaming. Amen? Amen. I mean, if I believe Arnold Schwarzenegger is all this, then you know what? I'm going to walk around with his power. Amen? Because I put this image. Sylvester Stallone. Who hasn't watched Sylvester Stallone and you think you're a boxer and you go out and as a kid, you go out there and start practicing. Amen? Beating on the cars, cutting the wood, whatever it is, eating raw eggs. Because you look at that image, because you see power in that image. So you want to imitate that image. Amen? How many times do we look at these magazines and we look at others and we want to imitate the image of that individual? Because now we think that that image is better than what we are. That's where we fall short. See, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 49, And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly father. Although we might be dust, we're still in his image. That means my God is I am. That means he's able to look whatever he wants to look like. Amen? Because look around and you're going to see how God looks. Because we're made in his likeness. We're made perfect. We're not made by an accident. He didn't have an accident. God doesn't have accidents. God, God does things with purpose. You're designed with a purpose. You're designed with gifts. That's a promise that God says that you are made in my image and likeness. See, he didn't tell everyone up there in heaven, hey, you know what? Let's just make this cow out of our image and our likeness. Let's just make this, these, you know what? These birds are going to be out of our likeness and our image. He, he, he didn't do that. We're the only one, male and female, that God said, let us make them out of our image in our likeness no other one no other cre create creature nothing that was was created except for us is out of god's image and likeness we're going somewhere church second corinthians 4 16 therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing yet the inward man is being renewed day by day 
See how many times it's getting old? It's affected people. Things droop, things wrinkle. And how many times do we put our sight on the physical? Because all this is going to return right back to the dust of the earth. Oh, I can't take this with me. Hallelujah, thank you, because there's some flaws that I think that's in it. Although I'm not, I, I, I'm flawless because I'm made in his image, in his likeness, amen. But there's just some things that, that I have to realize that, you know what, things are changing. And if I put my sights on my wrinkles or the, my, my, the, the abilities that I used to be able to do, now I can't do. If, if I put my sights on that, in, on that image, then I'm going to start getting depressed and worry. I'm going to start doubting. I'm going to start being consumed about everything, amen. You know what? Because it says in 1 Samuel 16, 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Every year, suicide increases. It's at an enormous rate right now. And I believe with all my heart is because they could not see their image in the image of God. We start comparing. Boy, the muscles on that guy. Whew, man, I like to have that. He wears that shirt good. I have to put on three of those babies to fit around me. Ladies, how many times have you picked up a magazine and said, man, I wish I, I, wish I looked like that. I wish I had that. How many times have we looked at someone else's life and man, I wish I had their lifestyle. How many times we see on social media, and, 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 you know, on the Facebook and Instagram, where we see someone, man, I wish I had that life. Man, I had, wish I had that spouse. I wish I had these kids. I wish I had that image. Look at their image. How many times have you said that about a movie star? But you haven't really taken in consideration that, that, you know what, they have to spend most of their money to build a house. They have to have full-time security because people are trying to break in, trying to kill them, trying to threaten them. They have to have security where they go. There's no privacy with their family. When they go to the beach, all cameras and everybody else all around them trying to see anything that they can see. Oh, did she do this? Did he do this? You know, you have to walk. I mean, what kind of lifestyle is that? But see, it's easy to focus on social media, on just the image, and we never know the background, and we start desiring that image. Amen? Amen. See, Adam and Eve, they were completely fine until they ate off the tree. And then they lost focus of who they were in the image of. See, sin was introduced at that time. And when sin was introduced... Adam and Eve automatically knew they were naked. And the one that they knew created them was the one they were trying to hide from. See, they were comparing themselves. Before they ate off the tree, they knew they were wonderfully made. There was no mistakes. There was no issues. There was no flaws. There wasn't anything that was wrong with them. They walked butt naked in the middle of the garden with Jesus Christ, walking with him. How was your day? Man, my day was wonderful. Did you prune those trees? Yeah, I pruned those trees. I'll tell you what, those plums are the best plums ever. God, you did such a good job with those. You know, we're tidying up the garden over here. We're doing this and, and oh, you know what? We have dominion. We ha oh, you know, the lions are laying down over here. Every, but we ate off the tree and now we have chaos. We have the lion trying to eat the sheep. We have the sheep that's eating my grass over here. He needs to go eat something else. I'm trying to maintain this. And we've allowed sin to come in. So now I can't stand before God because now I'm ashamed of God Almighty. Because that's why I wanted to clothe myself. Because I'm, what I'm telling God is I'm ashamed of my own image. I'm ashamed of your image, God. Because I'd rather look like this. So I have to hide myself. And too many times we hide ourselves from God because we're, we're seeking out another image instead of the image that God has given us. We're not seeking the heart. See, God said, you know what, Samuel, what I need you to do is I need you to go anoint this king. You know, there's some tough looking guys right over there. I just Look at them. Yeah, but that's just not the one. I, I, I see what you're looking at. But God says, you know what? That's not the one. Because the one that I see that is almighty and great is created in my image and he knows it. 
He, he knows that I'm, he, he knows that, that I created him. He knows his purpose. He knows the passion that I put in him. He knows that when he steps out in my name, that the Goliath is going to be destroyed. He knows he has dominion over all things. He knows that he can repent and I'm going to forgive him. He knows that I, I, I'm not going to let him be stranded. I'm not going to put him in a cave and not remember that he's anointed for kingship. I, I'm not going to do this. There's someone else, but you need to look into the heart. And when you look into the heart, you're going to find my image. Because unfortunately, when they ate off the tree, the outside image got corrupted. It turned into nothing but sin and, and flesh. And, and it's undesirable. But the flesh likes the flesh. But you have to look into the heart. Don't judge a man or a woman by what you see. Look into the heart and you're going to realize, oh, maybe they're not what you think they are. How many times you go to the Christmas tree or you get a package and you look at it like, oh, but the package is beautifully wrapped that the other person got. How many times as kids you ran out on the tree and you look for the biggest package because you thought that was going to be the best present. But it's the small one that the image isn't what you thought. See, God has sent so many of us. It says the Bible says that do not refuse anyone but love everyone as your neighbor, because you might be entertaining an angel unaware. That's what the scripture says. And how many times that that a a angel wasn't in the image what we thought, so we decided to turn away and walk, walk the other direction. That I refused the blessing. If Abraham chose to look out, oh, those ain't, no, the, no, 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 those aren't the right guys. Have you seen that little video clip that's going around on Instagram right now? I love this video clip. I don't know if it's made up or if it's real, but I, I love the fact that it, this guy's standing here or walking out of something, and, and he, he, he looks like he's homeless. He looks completely homeless. And some other guy that's all dressed up in a suit, ah, you know, drops his bag like the guy scared him or he was going to do something. So the guy picked up his bag, and he basically walked over to his Yugo. And this guy that looked like he was homeless walked over and got into his Lamborghini and drove off. How many times do we miss Jesus in someone because we're looking at the image of the flesh instead of what's in the heart? How many times we walk away from our purpose, our destiny, our promotion, because we're looking at the flesh instead of what's in our heart? You know what? I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. God said I can do all things. I'm made in his image. You know what? I don't care. I might not have the legs that that, that woman has, but I have some nice legs. Amen? I might not have the six pack, but you know what? I'm okay with my one pack because it's, it's okay. It's handsome. Amen. Because my wife loves it. And it doesn't matter if anyone else does because God says he loves it. Amen. Amen. Because I'm made in his image. I have to look in the mirror and look at Jesus whenever I start, whenever I want to start judging myself and I want to start downing myself. I need to remember that when I'm looking in the mirror, I'm looking at the image of Jesus. I'm looking at my savior. And if I choose to start downing me, I'm actually downing Jesus because I'm not, I don't want to down Jesus. I want to know that I can do all things. I want to know that I'm wonderfully made. I want to know that, that he loves me. I want to know that I can love myself because God loves me. I, I I choose not suicide because you know what? That, that, uh, God has created something that's magnificent. Amen? But see, some of us don't look that way, do we? We, don't, we, don't, we look at the outside. So I have a scripture for your hope. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. <laughs> so, you know, if you just think you're this ugly, if you can't, if you're useless, well, then you can count on this scripture. This should be a scripture that you memorize. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. So if you think you're a mistake, we know that all things work together for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. And he didn't create anyone that's not called. Because everyone is called. You're called to preach the gospel. You're called to live according to the gospel. You're called to love Jesus. You're called to glorify God. You have a purpose in your life because he's given you a purpose in your life because he didn't create you without a purpose. He created you with the purpose. So, so you have no excuse. No matter what you look in and what you see in the mirror, you have no excuse. Stop comparing yourself to others. Comparison, comparing yourself to others is destructive. Because see, that this is what happens. When I start comparing, I start coveting. When I start coveting, I start, I start committing idolatry. That's right. 
Because, see, I, I compare. Man, I wish I was like that guy. <sighs> he dresses nice. He looks nice. He has everything. And see, I, I start putting God down here because I'm really made in his image. And then I start taking this guy in his image and start putting him on a pedestal. Because when I start comparing, I start coveting. When I start coveting, I commit idolatry because I just put him on a pedestal because now I think he's better looking. I think he has better stuff. I love him more than I love my own life. And the only person that we should be comparing ourselves to, if you have to compare, is Jesus Christ. Because when you compare yourself to Jesus, man, this is one good looking dude. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, I'm in his image and his likeness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I am perfectly made. I have a purpose. You know, look at this guy over here. He just loves everyone. Everywhere he goes, there's a crowd. Oh, wait, oh, that's Jesus. That means I'm made in his likeness and his image. Everywhere this dude goes, man, I'm telling you, the, the, the darkness has to flee. There's light everywhere this dude goes. I don't understand. Wait a minute. I have that too. Everywhere I go, I can have joy because God has given me joy. Everywhere I go, I can have peace because God has given me peace. Oh, because that other dude that I was comparing myself to was messed up and jacked up, I found out. I found out his name was in uh, picture was on a, a wanted poster in, in, in the middle of the post office. Amen. But I was idolizing him at one time. But you know what? You, we have to compare ourselves to Jesus because when we compare ourselves to Jesus, it should encourage. It should lift us up because I'm in his likeness. I'm in his image. See, there was nothing Jesus couldn't do. So there's nothing that I can't do. He was more than a conqueror. So then that means I'm more than a conqueror. He was an overcomer. That means I'm an overcomer. He is wonderfully and beautifully made. Amen. Because he's God. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's wisdom. He, he's honor. He's respect. He's my buckler. He's everything that I need. And we need to realize it's more important what we have inside than what's the outside. The outside's going to turn back to dust. The outside's going to wrinkle. The outside's going to come old. There's going to be things that's gonna, not going to work at certain times. Then there's going to be things that are going to work. Have you ever tried to get out of bed one time and you pulled a back muscle? Just one little back muscle and you're completely out. You know, one little Charlie horse and you're down on the ground. One little knee. So, yeah, but that's okay. Man, God has the way. God's going to work it out. It, what matters is what's inside. I have to be confident about what's inside. I have to realize that it's about what comes out of my mouth and what's in my heart that defiles a person. Amen? It's not about anything else. It says right there in Mark 7, 14, when he called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone, and understand there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. Let me just paraphrase all this. Jesus is saying, I don't care if someone calls you stupid, someone calls you worthless, someone says you can't, someone says you're ugly. You know, in fact, you got this little gobbler underneath here. You know, you're trying to hide it with beard hair. Oh, you know what? You, you have some veins that's growing in your legs. You know what? You know, just, just you're growing more hair out of your ears than than on top of your head. Just you look at that guy. He has a six pack. You have a pack. You know, this is what Jesus is saying. Can we be real today? Because this is what we look at through the magazines. There's so many times the reason why we look at the magazines is because we want to change our image. We want to pick something that looks better than us. Amen. And Jesus is saying, you know what? It's not about what people tell you. It's not about what comes in. It's about what lives and stays in you. And it's the word of God that I wrote on your heart. It's the word of God that, that defines you. It's the word of God that created you. And you need to stand and look inside and know that it's the word of God that's in your heart. That you are not a mistake. That you do have a purpose. That you do have a passion. You have a reason to live. There's no reason to take your life. There's no reason to give up. There's no reason to compare. There's no reason to look at someone else for an image. Just Jesus Christ and you'll realize here it goes 19 because it does not enter his heart but his stomach and is eliminated this purifying all foods and he said what comes out of man that defiles a man for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts adulteries fornications murders thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lewdness an evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness all these evil things come from within and defile a man. How many times have we chose to walk around in someone else's image instead of our image? 
Because as soon as I do that, I defile my God. Because I already told him, I'm not wonderfully made. I'm not creating his likeness, his image. I'm not happy how you made me. Because I, I choose this six pack and over the, instead of this pack. I, I choose that mind over this mind. I choose those legs over these legs. I choose that waistline over this waistline. I, 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 do you see where I'm going? But when I walk out a life according to his word, and I walk out a life knowing who created me, knowing who I am, I, I please my God. And it doesn't matter what comes my way. You have to know who you're created in, the image of. That when someone says something that does not line up, you don't have to let that settle. It doesn't have to go to your mind and then down to your heart. You can realize that, you know what, I can. I can go back to school. I can operate a business. I can do all things. I am beautiful. I am handsome. I do have a purpose in this world. I do have a place that everyone needs. I, you know, I, you know I, I need to be here because I, there's others that rely on me. So suicide's not even an option. Uh, to down myself's not even an option because, you know, insecurity has to go. You know, I'm going to start loving myself because God, oh man, if I love Jesus, that means I have to love myself. So that, and that means, you know what, I, I'm I'm going to start respecting myself. I'm going to start giving honor to myself. I'm going to start ironing my clothes. I'm going to start painting my fingernails. I'm going to raise my head up, not out of pride or arrogance, but knowing that, you know, I'm a child of God. You know, I, I, can, I can do all things. You know what? I don't care what the world says. You know what? I, you know what? I don't really care. It's going to bounce right off of me like it's Teflon. You are a brilliant, genius individual. Amen. You can do all things. You're more than a conqueror. I, don't, I can't say enough that you're in God's image and God's image when he goes into a place darkness has to flee the nonsense has to flee joy has to come in peace has to come in the pity parties have to stop the worry has to go the doubt has to go because I'm in the image of God amen I have dominion over all things I have authority over all things Satan I hear you whispering but I'm not gonna allow it to come in I hear you saying this but I'm not allowing that I, I, I hear you to take a look at this individual I'm gonna take a look at the individual that's wonderfully made it's all oh, hallelujah but I'm also wonderfully made that's a great creation I'm a great creation he has all things I have all things oh but I'm gonna live a lifestyle that reflects what's really in the heart and I'm gonna raise up my shoulders and know who my creator is and I'm gonna portray this image just as Jesus would you think Jesus walked around with his head down all in a Ooh, absolutely not I know who I am it's not out of pride all those temptations Satan had for Jesus. Well, let me just tell you, Satan, it is written. It is written. We need to start speaking that. Yes. It is written, and it's a promise that I'm made in God's image and his likeness, not your Satan. So if that's what you think about yourself, I'll pray for you but I'm not going to receive it and I'm not going to live by it. Just because my daddy wants to do this, just because my mommy wants to do that. Well, you know what? That, that's between them. But let me just tell you, I, I, I'm God's creation. You might have given, me, given birth to me, but let me just tell you, you, we can't blame our parents. We can only blame ourselves if we choose not to live for God's image. James 3 8 but no man can tame the tongue it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison we got to stop speaking that poison we got to start speaking positive because we're made in his image in his likeness amen it says in Hebrews 8 10 for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord I will put my laws my Torah my teaching and instruction in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will bear their God be their God and they shall be my people we know who we are we have that love we have inspiration. We have encouragement written on our hearts. We know how to live out a life that portrays his image. Amen. We have Holy Spirit that comes in and guides us and directs us. We're going to return back to the dust. So what matters is what's inside of us. Amen. See, all of you are a gift. You have something special within you. There's a gift within you. And see, each and every one of us is just like that gift that I was telling you about underneath the Christmas tree. Some are different sizes. Some are small. See, some are wrapped in different colors. 
Some have some scars from what's going on. But there's a treasure, a gift inside. In each and every one of us is a gift that's wrapped in all different packages. And we walk around in this world and it's for others to unwrap the gift to see how great God is in our lives. Amen. And just look around and look at all the different wrappings in this room. Look how we're all wrapped. Look at the different colors. Look at the different sizes. Look at how everyone is made in God's image in his likeness. We are all a gift wrapped all differently. A unique set of fingerprints. But you are a gift. You are priceless. You, you are precious. Amen. And God's saying, you know what? Just like your mom and your dad or whoever put those gifts underneath that tree, they didn't do it by accident. That gift didn't get wrapped by accident. That gift, you know how you're so excited to give a gift. You make sure it's wrapped. You put the bow. You make sure the, well, I don't always, but my wife does. You make sure the bow matches the color of the wrapping paper. You don't want me to wrap a gift. It, com it comes with love, but it's not going to be the best thing ever, maybe. You, you, you like to pull the little thing, then make all the curly cues, you know, that I uh, can't think of the wrapping, the little strings, the bow's in the right spot, the little name tag with the frosty or the Christmas tree. It, there's detail to each and every gift. You lift up the branch, you set it in just the right spot. Oh, they're coming out of their bedroom on this side, so I'm going to set it on this spot. Oh, they're coming, I'm going to set it over here on this spot. Everything is unique and perfect, amen? And it's done with an intention. You know, that's exactly how Christ, our Lord, has done with each and every one of us. That we are a gift, specially wrapped. We're unique. And he's placed us exactly where he wants us with a unique purpose made in his image and his likeness. We're not a mistake. The gift didn't end up under the tree by mistake. The gift ended up exactly right there where you're at because Christ wanted you where you're at. Whatever you're going through, you're a gift to that situation. Whatever you are walking in, you're a gift to that situation. Whatever healing you're asking for, you're a gift to that situation. You're a gift. And what's inside of you is greater than anything of the world. And it's God's word. See, it says in verse 2 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness. And then Psalms 100, verse 3. And this could be the last one. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us. And not we ourselves. Right there's good news, amen? Because I would have messed me up. How do I know that? Because I tried it without God. I was messed up spiritually, emotionally, physically until I gave my heart to him. And then I realized, you know what? You are my creator. You know what's best for me. It's kind of like buying a car. You need to read the owner's manual because they know what's the best oil to put in. They know what's the best air filter that, because they want that car to last, amen? They know how to maintain it. God knows how to maintain this body, amen? He knows what this temple needs. He knows how he wired us, how he designed us, how he created us. He knows the gift that's inside and not we ourselves we are his people in the sheep of his pasture I want you today to see yourself as a gift that you're made in his image in his likeness you're unique you're not messed up you're not a mistake if you're thinking about suicide we need you here. Your gift is for someone else. 
I, I don't need you being convinced by Satan to take yourself out of here because Satan is selfish and he wants to destroy every gift that God's created and you're a gift that's why he's after you because he wants to destroy God's image amen he knows he can't destroy Jesus because he already tried. So what he's trying to do is destroy everything that God's created. He's trying to destroy the image and the likeness of God. And that's each and every one of us. Amen. And I rebuke that in your lives. This is Pastor Daniel. I hope the message has touched you. And I hope that, you know what, Holy Spirit's there tugging on your heartstrings. And I'm hoping that you are willing to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I know for me, it was a young child that I gave my heart to the Lord, but then, then I didn't live uh, my relationship for the Lord. I lived my relationship through my parents for the Lord. And then there was a time in my life where things just went wrong and went bad and, and the Holy Spirit was tugging at my heart and saying, hey, look, you know what? It's time. And I got on my knees. I cried out to the Lord and I made Jesus my Lord and Savior. And that was my relationship with him. And I know he's calling you right now into a relationship. And I just want to give you an opportunity to just enter in and give Jesus Christ your life and receive him as your Lord and Savior. It's this simple. All you have to do is close your eyes and bow your head and say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and change my life. And I surrender my will to you in Jesus name. If you've said that prayer, I'm telling you, you are saved. You are on the way to heaven and he just wants you to live according to his word. So get into a church, start serving, get into the word of God and make a difference in your life. Hopefully you received a word from the Lord today. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be sure to email us at admin at peak worship so that we can stay in contact with you. We want to make sure that you get plugged into a church in your area and we'll see you next time.